lot of people are asking themselves, what the hell is going on at Newcastle United? What is going on? Right now, as we speak, this team has dropped out of the Champions League in Group F, which was the toughest group, to be fair. They dropped down below Dortmund, PSG and AC Milan with only five points, not even coming third and getting themselves the Europa League football completely out of Europe. And on top of it, we are looking at them in the ninth position in the Premier League as we speak, far away from the top four, which should be the goal for Newcastle United after achieving that last season, which was a little bit of a surprise to people. But still, what has happened? Why is this team struggling so much? It clearly has to do with a lot of injuries that have happened, but also there's a lack of depth in this squad and a couple of positions could definitely be improved and some top players of the past could be moved on. I've watched a couple of Newcastle United fans videos and I kind of know what they are currently pointing towards as the issues in the squad. So now we're going to take over Newcastle. We're going to rebuild it in a way where we add quality depth to it and on top of it strengthen the starting 11 and most importantly we get them champions league football consistently so they can go ahead and spend that saudi money without ffp issues so let's talk about the current squad the current squad this is possibly the ideal situation for newcastle united as we speak this would be the lineup that you would see most of the time but Nick Pope injured. That man is basically out. Dubravka has stepped in and it hasn't looked that great. Botman was injured as well. So he wasn't playing. Lasell was stepping in. Then you have Dan Byrne at left back still. I'm not convinced. Yes, it might have worked last season, but clearly we are seeing issues in that spot. And when it comes to Trippier, Oh boy, has he had a terrible one and a half months, man. He started off so well into the season, but right now, a lot of Newcastle fans want to see Livramento become the main guy in that position and be built up as the youngster that he is into a great player. And that could come at the cost of trips. Then going into the midfield, you didn't really have Willock. I think he has also just come back from an injury. Tonali is not even in the game because of the betting allegations and being convicted. And then you have Bruno alongside Joylington, but that is not how they played in their last game. It was Longstaff. And then you had the youngster, Miley. Yes, this guy, who's a great talent, by the way, looks class. I really hope he has a future at Newcastle United. I'm very excited about his journey. But... That is the midfield that you had in their last game. I mean, come on. Longstaff should not be a starting player for Newcastle anymore. And they shouldn't have to rely on a 17-year-old kid to come in and save them. Which he's actually done. He scored some goals as far as I know. So that's very interesting. And then Miguel Almiron. Oh, mate. <laughs> the guy last season, he looked like the second coming of Messi. And now he's basically back to normal. And a lot of people are already complaining like this guy should never be a starter. He should be dropped. Anthony Gordon, though, got to be honest, I didn't expect him to be this good. But Anthony Gordon is actually class. Like, I, I personally am a Liverpool fan, as you guys know. So I already had something against him, just generally speaking. But I got to give him props, man. He stepped up really nicely for Newcastle in moments. And I really do like his style of play at the moment. He plays with a lot of confidence. Currently, he has four goals and two assists in like the last 15 games. Then you have Alexander Isak, who obviously is a freaking beast. But I believe he's also just come back from injury. Uh, Callum Wilson, for example, is another one where people are saying like he has lost a lot of yards of pace. He is trying to go ahead and like duel against defenders a lot more in like a physical uh, situation and rather than like going past them with his abilities and that definitely slows down the game of Newcastle once again Harvey Barnes was injured for a long time as well and they just had an insane pass like two months just injury ridden and their form has kept dropping and dropping so Newcastle United clearly having some issues and I'm completely open to changing nearly everything here I would say there are a couple of players who are safe, a couple of players that we definitely are going to be keeping around. I mean, don't get me wrong, Sven Botman definitely is going to be kept. The goalkeeping situation, because Pope could actually be out for quite some time. They're apparently looking to sign David De Gea. I'm open to letting Pope go, just hypothetically. Obviously, a fit Pope would be a part of this starting eleven for a while, but I'm open to bringing a new goalkeeper. Cher, don't get me wrong, is all right, but I do think 
Botman would profit from an amazing partner next to him, and Newcastle, generally speaking, with the money that the Saudis have, surely Cher can cannot be the guy that they plan with for the long term, and he's 31 years old anyways. Now, right back again, I think it's going to be a case of building up Livramento while Trippier is going down in his stats, and uh, Livramento is the long-term target for me, but as I said, midfield-wise and possibly attack-wise, especially right-wing, there needs to be things done. So let's start this rebuild immediately. You all know about the transfer of Vicario to Tottenham coming in from the Serie A. And now I'm doing the same with Michele Di Gregorio. He is the one I want to have in here. Sadly, you don't get the cutscene because your boy forgot to record that part. Well done. But trust me when I say this, this goalkeeper is incredible. I used him in a different rebuild already. But right now, I want him as the player because just yesterday, I was watching the way Napoli was playing against Monza, the team of Gregorio, and he was making saves for fun. Napoli was having 1v1 situations, headers, everything, and he just saved it all. This guy is a beast. He is due a massive move after this season. He's only 25, which is the perfect age profile as well for us to bring in a player that can be with this project for a while. And since he's Italian, he can become Tonali's best friend. Why not? You know me, I don't like bringing in the mainstream players all the time, but this one just makes too much sense. Imagine Antonio Silva from Benfica next to Botman. Botman, left-footed centre-back. Antonio Silva, right-footed centre-back. Both are tall, both can be very physical. And both can be very good on the ball as well, especially Antonio Silva, who is part of a Benfica squad that builds up their game from the back. And this kid is going places. If I mean, if Newcastle could get someone like him right now, that would truly be a statement for the fans to recognize, OK, this is the direction we're going into. We're going for the best and like best wonder kids out there and pairing them with other players who have experience, like the likes of Bruno as well. Antonio Silva, definitely one of the top five, top 10 center backs when it comes to youngsters, and definitely one that a lot of teams are gonna be wanting to buy. But hey, if Newcastle can get European football again, someone like him definitely should be an option. And European football is not too far away. Europa League spots are still there to be grabbed, and who knows, maybe they make it top five, and. I think the fifth position in the Prem can also still get you Champions League if things go right. I was watching Girona play in La Liga lately and they were playing against Real Betis. Their left back, the left back of Betis, was quite impressive. And that man is the one I'm going for right now because his contract is running out in June. So he could be a free player to sign for anyone. Currently, he's linked to AC Milan, where they have Theo Hernandez. So he obviously wouldn't play there unless Theo leaves. So I thought, hey, Miranda, this is the team for you to come in and join. Become the main left back of Newcastle United for only 15 million. That could be a price that they could pay. I mean, obviously, I'm, I've seen like... Milan offered three to four million to sign him in January to Newcastle United. Go out there, get this man into your team, man. His contract is running out. He's a quality left back who's great on the ball, at least from that one game I watched. And he is six foot one tall, which adds physicality into your squad once more. And it isn't that much of a massive drop off from Dan Byrne, who obviously is a giant. Respect to him for his performances last season. He also had a couple of good ones this year. Uh, but still, I do think there is someone needed in that position who is originally a centre-back. I believe Byrne was originally a centre-back, wasn't he? So, Miranda, you are the one for Newcastle United. This one just makes too much sense. January transfer window. Get it done. So let's see how the team has done in season one. Lads, we haven't made too many transfers, but what we have done is to get into the FA Cup final to play against the likes of Spurs, who brought in Jonathan David. What a transfer. All right, that would be something, wouldn't it? So let's quick sim this one and hope for the best. 
2-1 Newcastle. Isak and Gordon, FA Cup winners. That is our first trophy secured with Newcastle United. I actually don't know. Are they still part of any of the cup competitions this season? Let me know in the comments. Uh, they might be able to pull something like that off in the second half of the season when their players are fit again. But in the league, where did we finish? Third. Let's go. Champions League football allowing us to spend more money. Love that. 75 points on us. Let me quickly show you one thing, though. As we go into the transfer history, you'll see that I haven't spent too much money. I have loaned out Anderson and Livramento. I tried to loan out Miley as well. No one would take him for whatever reason. Dan Byrne I had to sell because Botman requested a transfer due to Dan Byrne stealing his playtime. Uh, Gregorio, I only spent 1.6 million plus Pope on. And Miranda was only 15 million, while Antonio Silva was share plus 15 million. So... For my first season, I didn't actually spend that much money, and I love that. So second season, now that we have gone ahead and gotten Champions League football for Newcastle again, more money should be available for this team. Alexander Isak, 39, top scorer, clear main target man in this squad. No chance for Wilson to take over that position. And Bruno, 18 goals and 10 assists. What a season that is for him. I absolutely love it. He definitely needs like a proper six behind him so he can go ahead and do his thing. If Tonali was there as well, both of them could act like an eight. And then you could have a proper CDM in this team taking their game to the next level, which is something I'm definitely planning to do as we go into season two now this my friends is where the fun starts starting 11 bench everything is changing ashby Quall, murphy all these guys out on loan hayden sold Mankio gone craft joins them frazier is left lasell has gone target murphy all these players shouldn't be in the plans of newcastle moving forward lasell is probably going to stick around as a backup to be fair but hey we are letting him go. Wilson is leaving at the age of 32. I'm okay with that. Trippier has now left to join Manchester City, which means Livramento is going to become our main right back. He's at a 78 rating as Trips has gone down to like an 82 by now. Almiron is being sold to Arsenal for 29.4 million. I don't know what they're thinking there. And then we had to let go of Joel Inton. Yes, I didn't want to. He requested a transfer and forced his way out of the team. So, with all that being said... For the starting 11 and also the bench, we have about 400 million to spend. And when I look at this team, I see a bunch of players who are very, very solid. What do I want? I want a new CDM, first of all. That's the most important thing for me. And then I also want to bring in a world-class right wing into this team. Not world-class, but someone that can get to that level. Harvey Barnes, no disrespect. Ideally, he should be a backup. Not someone like Almiron, but Barnes, in my opinion, is going to be the one and then a right wing that can take this team to the next level. Supply Isak with assists and everything. So CDM, right wing, and then a bunch of players for the bench for that depth that I have doubted with this Newcastle team anyways. So let's take that CDM issue very serious. This man right now is injured in real life, but we are in season two. So welcome to Jake Docore. The man that was linked to Liverpool quite a bit is now joining us. I actually wonder what's going to happen with him once he's fit again. Is he going to stick to Crystal Palace or is he going to become a part of an even better team? Docore comes in with an 80 rating. He can do all that defending for us. The man from Mali is here. And Livramento is now also part of the starting 11 as well. So I'm very, very pleased that we now have a proper six in there. I can support the likes of Guimaraes and Willock as well to move forward and get things done. I mean, Willock is only 24 years old. I really like him. I, 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 I enjoy so many of the moments he has in certain games where I think there is some player in there. If he can just consistently bring that out of himself, Willock is a quality player. Is it a player that is Champions League level though? I don't know. So later on, we might question that a little bit more. But for now, I want to bring in that right wing that takes us to the next level and then fill up the bench even more because it is not looking that great. A player that I like that I feel like is just not getting enough recognition because he's constantly a substitute is Ferran Torres. This guy still is young. He still has such a bright career ahead of himself. And I feel like if he could join a team where he becomes one of the main players, he could 
once again be on fire. I like him a lot. I think he is quality. Ferran Torres now joins Newcastle United for 70 million, taking that left and that right wing, sorry, to the next level. With that, now we have an even better player in Harvey Barnes as a substitute. Jan Kuba Minte is basically Almiron. He's quick. He's very good with his dribbling, but then he's just like the guy doesn't see his teammates. So <laughs> I watched plenty of Feyenoord games this season, as you guys know, and he drives me insane because he's so good in getting past people, but the passing is so bad. So I'm going to keep him and hopefully develop him into a quality player. Now, though, clearly we are lacking substitutions for the center back and the fullback positions. And most importantly, a backup striker. 11 goals, 7 assists when no one expected it. Jonas Vint is doing incredible things at Wolfsburg as we speak. People were expecting Lukas Nemecha to be the guy for them, but Jonas Vint stepped up and just took over. He is the main man at Wolfsburg, and now he's going to become a part of the big project here at Newcastle United for a cheap price of 25 million. He is the backup striker I want for this team. And with that, I got to move him around. There we go. We have the man to back up Alexander Isak, who stands six foot three tall, by the way, which makes him a great target man for us. How about a center back that can play left back? Just like Dan Byrne. This is a player coming in from another Premier League side. Totti Gomez. What a name. Uh, missing just one additional T right there. But this guy comes in with a 77 rating, which isn't impressive, right? It's not insane. But he's a left-footed player with good amounts of pace, good physicality. Still somewhat young, 25 years old. And he can play in that left-back position. So up next, I would ideally like to bring in a centre-back who can play right back as a backup again. Actually, I'm going right back that can play center back. This is Bafode Diakite from Lille, a player that, in my opinion, is due a move as well. He should stay another season, though, if he can, because this is, I believe, the first season where he's getting regular play time. But man, Lille just bring out incredible players constantly, and this one makes so much sense. Botman, usually, and uh, not usually, originally, a Lille player as well. And now Bafode Diakite comes in. Miley, I appreciate you. I tried to loan you out so many times. I don't know what's wrong with you. No one wants to pick you up. Diakite comes in and he can play for Livramento if needed, but also play in that centre-back position, which once again strengthens our bench quite a bit. But I can tell you right now, I think I'm going to drop Minte off the bench and bring in another midfield option because just long staff, that isn't an improvement at all, of course. So how about a man whose brother is also a professional football player right now? It is Copmanners. Yes, we're getting the one from Atalanta. The other one currently plays at Almir in the Eredivisie. Coop Manners is a quality player that is also part of the Dutch national team, if I'm not mistaken. He was part of that one game where they played that odd free kick and Wakehorse scored. I think he was the one, but he comes in with an 82 rating, which is the same as Willock, so they can battle it out for that position. And as I said, Minte, I'm going to take you out. Uh, you can drop down to the reserves and earn your spot if you want to, but this bench is now looking absolute quality, much better and also the starting 11 looking great. So Newcastle, go on to your journey right now. We'll make improvements later on as well. But for now, this is the team. You know what? Things have gone a little bit mad because we are part of the FA Cup final, but also the Champions League final. Now, I'm not going to play this one. I don't want to. We lost the cup final. Okay. I want to have a little bit more time with this Newcastle squad. I mean, looking at the team... It doesn't look like a Champions League winning side to me yet, especially on the fullback positions. We need to go up even more. Midfield, some of these players need to reach the level of Guimaraes. So I don't feel like my project here is finished yet. I want to still make some more signings and add a little bit more quality. But having a team reach the Champions League final should make it very easy to bring in big names next season. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Bayern Munich against Newcastle. They have... An incredible squad with Grifo joining in from Freiburg. Interesting. And Doyle is in there too. So let's kick off right now. See how things go. Bang. Do we win it? Yes, we do. Alexander Isak with the brace for himself. Champions League winning Newcastle United. 
Oh, mate, that is incredible. Let me see how they have done in the league as well. I honestly didn't see that coming. The fullbacks are too low rated. I don't get it. But maybe the signings I've made have been quality. I should just accept my success. <laughs> Let me go ahead and see the stats real quick. Isak, well done. Gordon, Ferran Torres, let's go. Barnes off the bench doing things. And the midfielders taking part as well. But in the league, where did this team finish? Second, 82 points. Alrighty then, lads. Let's do better. Let's go ahead and smash it next season and be even more dominant and win the Premier League too. First signing of the season is a goalkeeper. Yes, I want a new backup goalkeeper because Dubravka, his time is done. 7.2 million for Sebastiano Desplanches. This man comes in with a 73 rating, which is the same as Dubravka, but he has upside to him. A goalkeeper of Palermo, left-footed, 6 foot 2, Italian just like the Gregorio. I wish I could have Tonali by now, man. Come on, at least let me have him after the first season, as it will be in real life, but I get it. One of the most impressive players this season for Tottenham is joining us. It's not James Madison, it is Pedro Porro. Yes, I am upgrading that right back position. Livramento, well done. We won a Champions League trophy with you, but winning it twice, back to back, is a huge task and i want to bring in someone right here that could help us out even more totti gomez drops down into the reserves diakite turns center back by the way he's gonna be the main man for that defensive line and then we're gonna have porro come in as the one player to upgrade this team and from now on it's all on you lads you can do it again, but this time win the prem. So things have been going well so far. We are first in the league and we have beaten AS Roma 6-3. Before that, we played against Inter. And now Real Madrid is beaten 5-4. What a Champions League run this is. FA Cup finalists too. Our oh, lads, please win this as well. So we have FA Cup final against Arsenal. And we have a Barcelona Champions League final. Let's get it. FA Cup is won. Is there a chance for a treble? Is there an actual chance? Are we still first in the Premier League? Yes or no? Yes, we are. Same amount of points as Manchester City. Just one goal making the difference. Yes, that is insane. So the treble is out there and we can reach out and grab it with this team right here. I tucked in the fullbacks once again, and that has helped it seems the Corey on an 87, by the way, alongside Coop Miners. I cannot wait to see how this midfield plays, and I am sick to death that I have gone ahead and given Gimaraj a two-star weak foot still. How did I not improve that weak foot? That is a joke. But Ferran Torres, Isak, and Gordon are ready to take on the world. Andre, not Andre, Antonio Silva is now on that 89, same rating as Botman, who has been requesting a transfer, oddly enough, but we don't care. We're going to keep the guy in here, and we're going to smash it. And we're going to take a look at the stats. Who has done the best? Of course it is. Alexander Isak. 57 goal contributions in 60 games. The Swede is ready to break records. Torres on 30 and 10. Gordon 25 and 16. Every single one of our forwards has gotten over 40 goal contributions this season. That is just so sick. So we're going to go ahead and take on Barcelona for the treble. And they come in with Davi Nunez, Luis Diaz. Okay, two Liverpool players. Rafinha still there. De Jong, Fermirin, Busio. Okay. Hernandez has joined from PSG. Eric Garcia back at Barcelona. Bremer from Juventus. Araujo, who was a former LA Galaxy fullback, who's currently loaned out at Las Palmas. And then Ter Stegen back in goal. I cannot wait to see how this one is going to go. Our team is looking good enough to beat that but that front three kind of scares me as we go into this champions league final manchester united have once again lost in the premier league this time against nottingham forest who are on quite a run a lovely run gibbs white getting the winner for the likes of nottingham forest and one has to question what is happening with ten hag's job oh my god no way i just did that oh what he saves it you gotta be kidding. A yellow card gets given away anyways, but man, 
it's not just the coaching at Manchester United, which obviously is an issue, but at the same time, it's also the team, man. There are so many players that shouldn't be Manchester United players, especially, oh, wow, especially if you look at the likes of Anthony. How do you spend 70 million plus on a player like that? He's trash. He just is. Oh, I don't like this. That's a one. Oh, yes, the Gregorio. Yes, buddy. Italian goalkeeper. Why did he flop onto the floor one more time? That's mine. Big mistake from Busio. It, how is that not a foul? He clearly just slid right into the back of me. Oh, I'm going to concede off of this. What a joke. I'm sorry, but that is unacceptable. How is that okay? He literally just slid in from behind and I'm not getting advantage. Nothing. Does he touch the ball by any chance? Oh, he does. I mean, he technically doesn't. It goes through his legs, so that should be a foul. Poop miners inside. Bruno. Oh, lovely move. Testegen, I hate you. Cross whipped in. Isak, that's all you. Oh, I should have had that one. That was a big moment in this attack buildup for Barcelona. I oh, get that one at least. Docore, shove him off, lad. Oh, referee. Disgraceful behavior from this Barcelona side. Now there is Ferran Torres on a run. 1v1 against Testigan. Ferran Torres. 1-1. One, one. He scores against this former side. Yes, buddy. Yes. This is why I bought you. I trusted in you. Others use you as a substitute. You are one of the main players in this Newcastle United squad. And it paid off already. Ooh, I needed to do that. That had to happen there. Otherwise, he runs through and scores. Tactical foul. Extraordinaire. Not even a yellow card. <gasps> wow. Okay, Vasa. This game ain't no joke, huh? 2-1. I'm down again, but I'm not out yet. Oh, no. Oh, no. One bad move ruined it all. I can't believe it. It is 3-1 Barca. First half, four goals in total. Three for the Spanish side. Newcastle falling apart as we speak. I am making mistakes all the freaking time. Ah, oh, man. Can I get one back before half time? No, I'm getting bullied down the wings. I really am. It is Anthony Gordon in a good position. 3-2. Ah, Let's run it back. Come on. Oh, I love that. What? How's that his ball again? I'm I'm done. I'm done, bro. You gotta be kidding. How is that his ball? I had it perfectly fine. I have a strong center back holding on to it. But it, it oh man, it's so freaking annoying. I cannot get close to the freaking ball here. This Barcelona side is so annoying to play against. It's it's 5-2. I cannot explain to you how I'm fuming inside. I wanted this to be the fun party where we lift up the treble. But no, it is Barcelona just wiping the floor with me. Put my nerves. Find Isak. Cuts in. Please score. You're trash. You're trash. Isak cuts in. Smacks it. 5-3. Five minutes to go. Surely not. But maybe dragging Porro alongside him. Bruno Guimaraes. Don't put the ball too far ahead of your pal. I don't know where I'm going. I honestly don't know where I'm going. That could have been it. Getting 5-4 and maybe one last attack. But no, it's 5-3. Eight goals in a Champions League final and I've lost it. Oh, mate. That had to be the toughest front three I played against. Luis Diaz, Davi Nunez, Rafinha. I could not stop it. They were too good today. At least we won the Champions League title last season. But I couldn't do back-to-back. -back. Newcastle United, nonetheless, we created a beautiful team that won the Prem and the FA Cup in the same season and got to a Champions League final. Yes, it sucks to see Barcelona lift the trophy. But I've given it my all and they won it fair and square. Have a good one, guys. I'll catch you on the next one when we hopefully win the trophy once more. Take care and peace.